The Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. They forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, because it is consecrated by the word of God and prayer. If you point these things out to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished on the truths of the faith and of the good teachings that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, and in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the faith, to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them, so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And the Old Testament reading. If a man divorces his wife, and she leaves him and marries another man, should he return to her again? Would not the land be completely defiled? But you have lived as a prostitute with many lovers. Would you now return to me, declares the Lord? Look up to the barren heights and see, is there any place where you have not been ravished? By the roadside you sat waiting for lovers, sat like a nomad in the desert, you have defiled the land with your prostitution and wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withheld, and no spring rains have fallen. Yet you have brazen look of a prostitute. You refuse to blush with shame. Have you not just called to me, my father, my friend, for my youth? Will you always be angry? Will your wrath continue forever? This is how you talk, but you do all the evil you can. During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, have you seen what faithless Israel has done? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree, and has committed adultery there. I thought that after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not, and her unfaithful sister Judah saw it. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares the Lord. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go proclaim this message toward the north. Return, faithless Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am faithful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever, only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God, and have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree, and have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan, and bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, people will no longer say, The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter their minds or be remembered. It will not be missed, nor will another one be made. At that time they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather in Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days the people of Judah will join the people of Israel, and together they will come from a northern land to the land I gave your ancestors as an inheritance. 
I myself said, how gladly would I treat you like my children, and give you a pleasant land, the most beautiful inheritance of any nation. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from following me. But like a woman, unfaithful to her husband, so you, Israel, have been unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. A cry is heard on the barren heights, the weeping and pleading of the people of Israel, because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. From our youth shameful gods have consumed the fruit of our ancestors' labor, their flock and herds, their sons and daughters. Let us lie down in our shame, and let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against the Lord our God, both we and our ancestors, from our youth till this day. We have not obeyed the Lord our God. If you, Israel, will return, then return to me, declares the Lord. If you put your detestable idols out of my sight and no longer go astray, and if a truthful, just, and righteous way you swear, as surely as the Lord lives, then the nations will invoke blessings by him, and in him they will boast. This is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and to Jerusalem. Break up your unplowed ground and do not sow among thorns. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your hearts. You people of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or my wrath will flare up and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. Announce in Judah, proclaim in Jerusalem, and say, Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, Gather together, let us flee to the fortified cities. Raise the signals to go to Zion, flee for safety without delay, for I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. A lion has come out of its lair, a destroyer of nations has set out. He has left his place to lay waste your land, your towns will lie in ruins without inhabitant. So put on sackcloth, lament and wail, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned away from us. In that day, declares the Lord, the king and officials will lose heart, the priests will be horrified, and the prophets will be appalled. Then I said, Alas, sovereign Lord, how completely you have deceived this people in Jerusalem by saying, You will have peace when the sword is at our throats. At that time, this people in Jerusalem will be told, A scorching wind from the barren heights and the desert blows towards my people, but not to winnow or cleanse. A wind too strong for that comes from me. Now I pronounce my judgments against them. Look, he advances like the clouds. His chariot comes like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, we are ruined. Jerusalem, wash the evil from your heart and be saved. How long will you harbor wicked thoughts of voices announcing from Dan, proclaiming disaster from hills of Ephraim? Tell this to the nations, proclaim concerning Jerusalem. A besieging army is coming from a distant land, raising a war cry against the cities of Judah. They surround her like men guarding a field, because she has rebelled against me, declares the Lord. Your own conduct and actions have brought this on you. This is your punishment, how bitter it is, how it pierces to the heart. Oh, my anguish, my anguish, I writhe in pain. Oh, the agony of my heart, my heart pounds within me. I cannot keep silent. For I have heard the sound of the trumpet, I have heard the battle cry. Disaster follows disaster, the whole land lies in ruins. In an instant my tents are destroyed, my shelter in a moment. How long must I see the battle standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? My people are fools, they do not know me. They are senseless children, they have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, they know not how to do good. I looked at the earth, and it was formless and empty, and at the heavens, and their light was gone. I looked at the mountains, and they were quaking. All the hills were swaying. I looked, and there were no people. Every bird in the sky had flown away. I looked, and the fruitful land was a desert. All its towns lay in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. This is what the Lord says. The whole land will be ruined. Though I will not destroy it completely, therefore the earth will mourn, and the heavens above grow dark. Because I have spoken and will not relent, I have decided and will not turn back. At the sound of horsemen and archers, every town takes to flight. Some go into thickets, some climb up among the rocks. All the towns are deserted. No one lives in them. What are you doing, you devastated one? Why dress yourself in scarlet and put on jewels of gold? 
Why highlight your eyes with makeup and adorn yourself in vain? Your lovers despise you. They want to kill you. I hear a cry as of a woman in labor, a groan as of one bearing her first child. The cry of daughter Zion, gasping for breath, stretching out her hands and saying, Alas, I am fainting. My life is given over to murderers. Go up and down the streets of Jerusalem. Look around and consider. Search through her squares. If you can find but one person who deals honestly and seeks the truth, I will forgive this city. Although they say, as surely as the Lord lives, still they are swearing falsely. Lord, do not your eyes look for truth? You struck them, but they felt no pain. You crushed them, but they refused correction. They made their faces harder than stone and refused to repent. I thought, these are only the poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. So I will go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will attack them. A wolf from the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait near their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out. For their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. Why should I forgive you? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by gods that are not gods. I supplied all their needs, yet they committed adultery and thronged the houses of prostitutes. They are well-fed, lusty stallions, each neighing for another man's wife. Should I not punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Go through her vineyards and ravage them, but do not destroy them completely. Strip off her branches, for these people do not belong to the Lord. The people of Israel and the people of Judah have been utterly unfaithful to me, declares the Lord. They have lied about the Lord. They said he will do nothing. No harm will come to us. We will never see the sword or famine, the prophets are but wind, and the word is not in them. So let what they say be done to them. Therefore, this is what the Lord God Almighty says. Because the people have spoken these words, I will make my words in your mouth a fire, and these people the wood it consumes. People of Israel, declares the Lord, I am bringing a distant nation against you, an ancient and enduring nation, a people whose language you do not know, whose speech you do not understand. Their quivers are like an open grave. All of them are mighty warriors. They will devour your harvests and food, devour your sons and daughters. They will devour your flocks and herds, devour your vines and fig trees. With a sword they will destroy the fortified cities in which you trust. Yet even in those days, declares the Lord, I will not destroy you completely. And when the people ask, why has the Lord our God done all this to us? You will tell them, as you have forsaken me and served foreign gods in your own land, so now you will serve foreigners in a land not your own. Announce this to the descendants of Jacob and proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, you foolish and senseless people who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Should you not fear me, declares the Lord? Should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, Let us fear the Lord our God, who gives autumn and spring rain in season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Your wrongdoings have kept these away. Your sins have deprived you of good. Among my people are the wicked who lie in wait like men who snare birds, and like those who set traps to catch people, like cages full of birds. Their houses are full of deceit. They have become rich and powerful and have grown fat and sleek. Their evil deeds have no limit. They do not seek justice. They do not promote the case of the fatherless. They do not defend the just cause of the poor. Should I punish them for this, declares the Lord? Should I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in the land. The prophet's prophecy lies, the priests rule by their own authority, and my people love it this way. But what will you do in the end?